Today's review is sponsored by Georgia, one of the happiest and neediest dogs ever. All she wants is attention. Seriously, if she could get any closer to you, she would be inside of you. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. Street Law. Hi. Hello everybody and welcome back to the most professional channel on YouTube. As you can see, I'm still at George's house here, uh, so she might be joining us sporadically throughout this review, so uh, just be ready for that. Before we get going here, I want to give a shout out to the Cobwebs channel run by Daniel. Um, he has a great channel, he focuses more on uh, older classic horror movies, retro horror movies, talks about a lot of classic films on his channel, really good stuff, I highly recommend checking him out. Um, well anyway, he recently made a video where he said he was not a big fan of the Death Wish movies. Now, I want to be clear here, this is not a call out, this is not me saying he's wrong for disliking those movies, that's not it at all. Everyone has different tastes in movies. I personally am not a big fan of American Psycho. Put down your pitchforks. But like I said, this is not meant to be a call-out or to argue in any way for Death Wish. But watching that video made me think about street law. So I wanted to talk about this movie as an alternative to those who are not a fan of Death Wish. Just to provide an alternative movie that they might like more. If you don't like Death Wish, you might like street law. Here. I hate to lose all this. Cost you a fortune. <laughs> it's a present for the police. Except this one. I love the Death Wish movies. I'm a Charles Bronson fan. And while the Death Wish movies aren't my favorite Bronson movies, I do enjoy them very much. But if I'm going to be honest, I like Street Law a little more. I'm a big Eurocrime fan, or Policieski. One of the things I find fascinating about Italian exploitation films, especially from this era, is a lot of them are based around popular foreign films, mostly American flicks. I've mentioned this before, but Italian production companies at the time insisted that filmmakers make movies that were like popular movies in other countries. In America, as westerns were growing in popularity, you saw spaghetti westerns in Italy. And then in America, you saw westerns start to die off, and then you saw this rise of cop and gangster films. So in Italy, you saw spaghetti westerns start to die off, and then you saw a rise of cop and gangster films in Italy. Thus we got Eurocrime. Peace and goodwill, kids. We'll be home in no time. There's nothing to worry about. Street Law is the Italian death wish, or at least one of the Italian death wishes. There's also Death Rage and a few others. And I do like Street Law more than Death Wish. Street Law is a vigilante flick, simple premise like many vigilante flicks. Person is attacked, or their loved ones are attacked, so person goes out to get revenge on the scumbags who wronged them. Our main character is Carlo, played by Franco Nero, hell yeah. He's at the bank one day, and the building is ascended upon by a group of violent criminals. Carlo attempts to fight back, and as a result, he's taken hostage and badly beaten. This doesn't come off for us, we can thank you, mister! What the shit were you trying to do, Fiat Nero? Ah! Jerks like you never learned! Ah! Yes! Ah! Ah! The cops, of course, can't find the criminals, and they blame Carlo for fighting back because they're so damn useful. So Carlo sets out to find these criminals and bring them to justice. But he doesn't start off by picking up a gun and going to the streets, no. It takes a long time to get to the shooting, but that doesn't matter. Street Law is still an entertaining, interesting, and suspenseful movie, even though it takes a while to get to the shootout. Hello. You shouldn't try screwing me. I might react. Now I want that stuff by tomorrow night at this time. Or the next job you pull will be in five years, when you get out of jail. 
One thing I like about street law is the victim is the one going out to get revenge on the people who harmed him. I love me a revenge flick, I love me a vigilante flick, I like the ones where the person who was wronged is the one setting out for revenge, and I like the ones where a loved one is harmed, and then so the person is then going out for revenge. When it comes to these kind of movies, I like a good mix. But I like how Carlo is the one who is victimized, and it's him who's going out to get revenge on these scumbags. It helps to set it apart from Death Wish, even though this is an Italian Death Wish ripoff. But I stand by the fact that just because something is a ripoff doesn't make it a bad movie. There are a lot of films out there that take inspiration from other movies, and they're still very entertaining. I swear I'll kill them. I'm gonna kill them. <laughs> if you're going into street law expecting a lot of shooting, you're gonna be disappointed. There is a decent body count here, but this movie is very top-heavy and very bottom-heavy with its kills. It's mostly at the beginning and at the end that we get the bloodshed. But Street Law is not boring. What I like about this over Death Wish is the story. Carlo thinks a lot in this movie. He doesn't just pick up a gun and become a vigilante. We're following his journey into eventually becoming a vigilante. We watch him try all these different methods until it eventually leads to a fight for his life where he has to use his gun. Carlo is not a stone-faced badass like Paul Kersey. As much as I like Bronson in those movies, he doesn't emote that much. Franco Nero emotes a lot in this flick. I didn't defy anybody. I was... I was just trying to get my money. I sweat for that money, do you understand? And then they hit me. What should I have done? Thank them and apologize, huh? Carlo is very green when he starts his quest to find these criminals. He starts off by going around the criminal underbelly, asking questions, trying to get information. It doesn't go well. Now you can sell it to the junkyard, you punk. And don't show your dumb face around here again, you got me? He then tries to make a connection in the criminal underbelly, tries to find an informant in some way, either willingly or through blackmail. This brings us to the character Tommy. Tommy is a small-time crook, doing all these jobs so he can raise enough money to open a car repair shop. When Carlo and Tommy first start interacting, they try to outsmart each other. It's a battle of wits. Carlo gets dirt on Tommy, and Tommy tries to weasel his way out of helping Carlo. <sighs> Even when they start working together, they do screw each other over in certain ways. Things take a bad turn here and there, but it eventually gets to a point where they do start working together, and they create this bond, and we grow to like Tommy. These two characters work so well off each other. We grow to care about this duo. The relationship between Tommy and Carlo is one of the best things about the movie. Then I'll open an auto repair shop. I'll be all set. How much have you put away? <laughs> Not a lira. <laughs> but what makes Street Law so engaging is watching Carlo's journey to find these gangsters. Everything starts off with him trying to find evidence for the cops. He finds the gang's warehouse and calls the police. But, as you would expect, the cops don't move in. It's frustrating, but in a good way. Come to Vicor de Navillo. There's a warehouse at the end of the street full of stolen goods with the guys who robbed the post office. Who's calling, please? What the hell do you care? Hurry up! Who's calling? Christ, get moving! It pulls you into the story because Carlo is trying so hard to nail these guys, but things keep getting in the way. The way that Carlo and Tommy eventually get the cops to start putting pressure on the crime syndicates is very clever. I won't spoil it here, but it's... So satisfying.
Street Law has one of my favorite action scenes in any Italian exploitation flick. It's so simple, but so good. I won't spoil too much, but the basic gist of it is Carlo eventually gets captured by the gang, and when he's trying to escape, one of the thugs tries to run him down with a car. The stunt work is so good. It's basically just a guy getting beaten up by a car. There are moments where you see Carlo getting hit by this car, and it looks so painful. It's just him getting knocked around. There are some good stunts in this movie, some simple, some chaotic, but it's the simplicity of this action scene that makes it so good. It's just a man versus a car. Everything builds to this fantastic climax. Again, I don't want to spoil too much here, but this is where we finally get to some shooting. And this is a very suspenseful climax, well worth the wait. But we don't mind the wait getting to the shootout, because everything building up to this is entertaining and interesting. Where the hell do you think you're going? <laughs> Street Law is one of my favorite Eurocrime films. Yeah, it is an Italian ripoff of Death Wish, but it's still a damn good movie. It has good main characters that we care about, an interesting story, some good action scenes, some good stunt work. It's a fun ride, and it has Franco Nero being awesome. If you're a fan of Death Wish, you might like this one. If you're not a fan of Death Wish, you might prefer Street Law. And with that, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of seven, but the deaths are mostly at the beginning and end of this flick. The majority of kills are gunshot related. I don't want to say any more because spoilers. There is some nudity here with a fully naked lady, but not much more than that. This is an Italian ripoff of Death Wish, but as much as I love Death Wish, I like this one more. Franco Nero is great in this flick. The character of Carlo is a man we want to root for. I like the relationship between Carlo and Tommy. It starts off as enemies, goes through many turns, and they eventually become allies. There's not a lot of shootouts in this vigilante film, but that doesn't hurt the movie. There's plenty of entertaining and interesting moments, plus some good action scenes that don't involve shootouts. And the climax is very suspenseful. I don't want to say any more than that. I'm giving this a 4.8 out of 5 a good time for fans of vigilante flicks, and a good alternative to Death Wish. Check this one out. As always, I want to thank all of you for continuing to watch and support this channel. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know some of your favorite vigilante flicks. This is The Maniac and Georgia, here to remind you that the grindhouse will never die. Yeah, I told you she loved attention. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay. The most professional channel on YouTube. Yeah, I know I love you too, Georgia.